they had drugs on them, which is why they didn't stop for the officers. No one was hurt in the crash or the earlier shooting. Suspects are now behind bars. Police believe the shooting might have been gang related. Police now say they believe the young woman who was found dead in her own home in Salt Lake City last night committed suicide. Police originally told us they were investigating it as a homicide because they received a disturbing 911 call from the apartment near 1600 West and 17th South. Now they said nobody was on the other end, so they tracked the call to that apartment. When officers went into the home, they found a 25-year-old woman dead from an apparent gunshot, and after further investigation determined that woman most likely shot herself and then dialed 911. Amtrak's busy Northeast Corridor is back open a day after a deadly crash just south of Philadelphia. A train hit equipment on the track Sunday, killing two workers and injuring dozens of passengers. The train that crashed was going from New York to Georgia when it hit a backhoe that was on the tracks south of Philadelphia. Investigators are trying to figure out why the heavy equipment was on the track in the first place. We will be looking at mechanical, operations, signal, track, human performance, and survival factors. NTSB investigators recovered the train's event data recorder, as well as video from the train's cameras. They were sent to Washington, D.C. for analysis. Now, Sunday's accident comes less than a year after eight people were killed and more than 200 injured when an Amtrak train derailed in Philadelphia. A massive document leak out of Panama has revealed how world leaders and the rich and powerful might be hiding billions of dollars. Yeah, the so-called Panama Papers are already being dubbed the WikiLeaks of the mega rich. Don Daler reports from New York. An anonymous source provided nearly 40 years worth of documents from a law firm in Panama named Mossack Fonseca, which helps establish offshore bank accounts for the world's wealthiest people. The 2.6 terabytes of data handed over to journalists reportedly contains approximately 11 and a half million documents, including nearly 5 million internal emails, providing a window into some 214,000 companies. This really told us something about how the offshore financial system works and, and especially about who are the kinds of people who are using it. Michael Hudson is one of hundreds of journalists who researched the documents in what's likely the biggest leak of inside information in history. The same system that, that politicians and the mega wealthy and billionaires are using to move money and do transactions is also being used by criminals, drug kingpins. Among the 12 current or former heads of state named in the investigations, the presidents of Ukraine and Argentina and the king of Saudi Arabia, and while he is not named directly, the documents show allies to Russian President Vladimir Putin secretly shuffled as much as $2 billion through banks and shadow companies. Masek Fonseca called the leak a crime and stressed to Agence France Press that we have no responsibility in how these companies were used. Don Daler, CBS News, New York. Now, Kremlin officials said the leak of the confidential documents was part of a plot to destabilize Russia. Well, a vehicle ran into a fire hydrant in West Jordan just a little while ago, and it caused a water line break. A pretty big mess. Our 2 News photojournalist Todd Dinsmore tweeted out these photos at 3000 West and 7800 South, and you can see the crash flooded a nearby parking lot and a grassy area. There's like a big pool, and uh, police had asked people to avoid that area, but now they say it's safe and the roads are back open. Well, tickets are now on sale for the Dalai Lama's upcoming address at the University of Utah. A limited number of tickets started to go on sale today at 10 o'clock. Things opened up. They cost $35 a piece. The Dalai Lama will speak at the Huntsman Center on the U of U campus on June 21st. Now, he was slated to speak at the university last October, but canceled due to his health and at the request of his doctors. All right, we have a, another big name coming to Salt Lake City. Acclaimed novelist Stephen King is coming to the city. The writer will speak, read, and answer questions during his Utah stop on the book tour for his latest novel, End of Watch. That's according to representatives from the King's English Bookstore. The King's English will host the event at Juan Diego Catholic School in Draper. That's a high school at 7 p.m. on Friday, June 17th. Though King won't be doing a book signing, event hosts will give away 400 pre-signed books to random winners at the end of the event. 